Okay guys, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've done a video, so we're going to go ahead and begin our embedded web server. Woo! So, I've got the dev board, in fact, uh, you know, that I showed you uh, in one of my videos, uh, the development tools uh, starter board. This is the, this is the PicDem, or, yeah, the PicDem2.net kit is what this is. Yeah, PicDem2.net kit. And what it's for is it's for um, working on uh, embedded web servers. So it's got an LCD screen. Um, it's got uh, two different um, RJ45s. And what that's for is that the, the microcontroller that's on here um, has an embedded uh, TCP IP transceiver already in it, as well as they have another one. I believe, I believe that's it. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I'd have to look at the board. It's kind of hard looking at it through the camera. I'd have to get my face down there to see the the actual package markings. But basically, there's another chip on here that's one of the external uh, uh, controllers, TCP IP controllers. So they've got basically two ways of doing it. You can uh, hook this one up, and then this one is the uh, external one. This goes to a chip that then the chip then goes through, I think, SPI or SPI um, to... Uh, to the micro to the microcontroller, or you can plug into this one, which is using the microcontrollers on board uh, TCP/IP uh, hardware. So anyway, it's got some LEDs. Um, it's got a pot to play with, some buttons to play with, even kind of like a little breadboard area right here. I know I've kind of gone gone over this in the uh, previous videos, so I'm not going to go too in depth on what's actually on here. Uh, if you want to know what actually is on here, then you can check with another video. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and power it up. <clears throat> got me a, a little nine volt power connector here and honestly um, I, I looked into it actually I, did, I, I take that back this is actually a 12 volt connection it says 9 volts on here but when you look up this regulator this regulator is a uh, national instruments regulator which um, or national semiconductor sorry not national instruments I keep getting that mixed up national semiconductor part it's an LM 2940 CS which has a maximum voltage of 45 volts so um, yeah, you, it can take quite a bit. So I'm going to use a 12 volt supply, and everything should be should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. All right. So we've got. Let me see if I can zoom in here. We've got some LEDs going on here. We've got uh, looks like a power indicator LED right here that's on. We also have an LED that's flashing right now. These are some of the ones that are programmable. We got one slide. Then we also have it says TCP stack version 5.31. And then this is the IP address that is the default IP address is programmed. These boards come pre programmed with a pre, uh, pre built uh, TCP IP stack and software already on it. So what we're going to do is for this video, we're just going to, I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. We're going to take and kind of go through the demo software that they include. Um, on it and uh, we're going to just kind of play around with it just as it stands and then once we get done uh, kind of showing what all it can do in the different uh, pre-built softwares then we'll dive into uh, building our own and figuring out how this thing is actually wired and connected I'll probably take you through the hardware drawings like we normally do we do the hardware and then we do the software and then we do it all together and show you it working so that's kind of the ways it's going to be this is going to be quite a few uh, day series that we're going to probably be doing because uh, there's, there's a lot to these, especially with embedded web servers. There's a lot to them. Um, setting up all the TCP/IP stack is is kind of involved. There's a, there's a lot of things to do, and there's a lot of sifting. If anybody's ever cracked one of those open, the TCP/IP stack has a lot of generic code, and what I mean by that is it'll work for many. Di there's many different processors uh, or microcontrollers that have the TCP/IP hardware in them as well as external devices and so they have basically in their tool set they've made just where it'll it's universal you can use you can use many many different microcontrollers with it whereas we'll probably be trimming all that out and uh, tailor it to to what specific chip that we're using which in my case otherwise I, I I'm going to use this one which I'd have to I'd have to create a new board and everything that's why I had uh, 
got with uh, Aero Electronics and had them help me out with uh, with uh, basically procuring one of these boards because these these dev kits are great. Those of you that have never played with a dev kit, these are great uh, tools to to experiment and play on because, like I said, they give you some LEDs to play with, some buttons. All of this is just basically GPIO con connected to the to the processor, and you can just program it any way you want, play with stuff, and then. Micro microchip does this picktail thing, which is this little header right here. This is their um, picktail, uh, is what they call it. They make other little like daughter card boards that will plug into here. That then it brings it into the process, and you can program like let's say LCD screens or different sensors or kind of like kind of like on when I when we did the Raspberry Pi. You know how the Raspberry Pi has that header, and they make all kinds of different things for it. Well, usually most all. Um, Microchip dev kits that I've seen are now starting to come out with this this pigtail uh, connection, which is, which allows you to connect even more external devices uh, to it. So that way you don't if if you're wanting to really do web-based stuff and then you want to do maybe an LCD screen with it and maybe some other things, you have this little board that they're all kind of universally the same. So uh, as you move on to different dev kits and things, you can still you know. Uh, plug in different, you know, you, you can still use your same stuff that you've used before. You don't have to keep buying new uh, equipment that's the same thing but has different connectors on it. They, they're trying to standardize here. So that's kind of nice. That's kind of a cool deal. We may play with something like that. I may see if I can't get maybe one of the LCD boards or something and we'll do an LCD series later or something. Anyway, that pretty much does it for the hardware. So we know what this is. It's 169.254.1.1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head on over to the computer and we'll uh, check out uh, some of the software and we'll actually log into this thing and see what kind of web page they've got for us and what kind of stuff we can play with. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay guys, we're now at the uh, computer side of things. What we're going to do now is we're going to have to reset our uh, network connections to work with this new board. So to do that, you're gonna if you have Windows 7, you're going to go into the network and internet, uh, basically control panel item, go into network connections, and then you're going to right click on your network connection and choose properties. So now once we get into properties, let's let that get up. All right, we're going to go down to uh, TCP IP version 4. We're not using version 6 yet, so version 4, properties. Now I'm going to basically clear everything out here because I'm going to reset this. So now the IP address that we had off of it was, I'm going to go check real quick. Okay. So we've got 169.254, oops, 254, okay, 254, my, my bad, 254, and then it was dot one, dot one, so we're going to do, whoops, didn't mean to hit tab, we're going to do dot two, why not? And I'm guessing that's probably the right subnet mask, no, probably not. And we'll go with that for right now. And no default gateway. Let's see what we can do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the window and the R key to bring up our run menu. Bring up a command prompt. And we'll see if we can, oops, ping. Uh, or wait, no, <laughs> I'm so used to typing 192. Uh, ping 169.254.1.1. And it looks like we can. We can ping it. So hooray. Hope, hopefully you guys can see that. I wish I wish I could make this. I don't know how to make this bigger. Uh, I don't know. Basically, I just pinged it, which uh, those of you that don't know how to ping, you just type ping, P-I-N-G, and then the uh, the actual uh, IP address you're wanting to ping. And as long as you get some replies from it, which I got, I sent out four packets, got four replies back, you're good to go. So that means that we're good to go. So now what we need is our wonderful web browser. And we're going to type that in, 169.254.1.1. And there we go. <clears throat> so here is the web page. I am now talking directly to the web page that is, um, that's on the microcontroller. So this web page is actually uh, on there. So now here's what we can do. We can actually click these different buttons, and we'll get some LEDs. So I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can really see this. And then what I'm going to do is I'll pop a video up here, here in a moment, and we'll uh, we'll we'll check it out, and we'll start clicking on some of these buttons. You'll get to see what's going on. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm going to see if I can't maybe move the microphone a little bit closer to me. I'm kind of across the room because I'm doing the uh, I'm uh, sitting over here pushing buttons on the device. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on 
one of the other LEDs. So I'm going to click on that and as you can see the, the LED done, it came on right here. And I think if you click it again, I think it starts flashing. Well, maybe not. Okay, well anyway, I can turn LEDs on as you can see as I click. And the same thing with um, the buttons. If you want to watch the, uh, the buttons there, when I push a button, see I'm pushing the buttons, and you see it change on the screen. So this is all happening in live. It's, it's live happening uh, on the chip. And then there's a potentiometer that's right here, and I can change its value. Can you see that? See that changing? So I can change the potentiometer. So basically, that's, that's how this thing sort of basically works is uh, it takes that information and uh, translates it to the web page and then you can see things happening in uh, in live lifetime and there's you can do stuff on the board itself and see it change and see it change or you can also do things from the web interface such as oops, such as clicking on LEDs or, or other tasks and you can watch it change on the board so pretty cool deal so I don't know, I think we may uh, go back to our web page. Okay, also we've got uh, uh, many other things on the side. There's a lot of different things. There's form processing that will tell you how to do, uh, how to accept data yeah, from other users and you can create forms and all kinds of other things. There's ways of working with cookies and this. Uh, you, you can make it where this thing will send email, build up a message and then it'll email it out uh, your SMTP server wherever and authenticate and send emails. You can make it uh, do dynamic DNS where uh, it'll do di dynamic DNS updates, you know, where it'll update uh, DUI DNS or one of those uh, dynamic DNS services. It'll update, give updates to them. Um, it has a lot of really cool like SNMP configuration, which looks like it needs a password for. Oh, that's fun. And uh, network configuration that needs a password for, which I don't know. I don't have to look at my documentation. Dynamic variables, looks like there's a lot of cool different things that you can use in, with this guy. Um, we'll probably maybe do some other videos uh, showing, showcasing how these, these things work. But for now, we're just doing a, a brief overview as the, this tab shows, the overview of how it works and seeing that we can actually get to the GPIO uh, from uh, the web interface here, which is kind of the thing that I want the most. That's what we're seeing, you know, when you see those, those, uh, those videos on like, uh, make controlling your thermostat or whatever. And in fact, I did uh, some stuff using the web IO Pi stuff for the raspberry Pi. If you haven't seen those videos, check those out. They're pretty cool. Uh, using a raspberry Pi. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing a little bit more in depth. Like I'm going to show you how to actually using microchips, um, solutions, their, uh, ENC, I think, uh, solutions, for uh, the embedded web server. I'm going to show you how to make your own custom uh, hardware and software for a specific uh, embedded web server uh, solution. So essentially you don't have to go buy the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and have all this other functionality uh, that you're not going to use because you just want to use it for a web-based thing. Well, with this, you can create your own custom web-based uh, solution that Maybe doesn't may only cost like fifteen dollars, you know, to to produce instead of costing the forty five, and then you get all this stuff that you're not going to use, you know. So you basically basically make it very specific to you, and that's what we're going to be looking at in the rest of these demos and uh, how to actually hardware implement this as well as uh, build the software for it. So. We'll be taking a look at that over the next few days, so exciting stuff. Um, it, things are quite busy in my life right now, so we'll have to see. I'm going to try to post videos in a timely manner, but if they start getting spread out, bear with me. I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. Uh, I still answer all my uh, PMs as much as I can, as well as uh, any comments, questions, anything like that that you have. Uh, thank you very much for all the questions and the comments. It's been great. I've helped quite a few people. Quite a few people helped me, so it's been great. So continue those to flow in. Keep watching, and we'll see you next time. And after that, that ought to do it. Take care.